Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, wow, this is beautiful. You know, I'm I'm so happy to see you. You just like such a beautiful family here. And um, I was longing for this, you know, for all this. I don't know. We have two years actually today. I haven't been here, so we had a great, great time with God. You know, <laughs> this was a great journey. It's uh, it's interesting. Just give you a little bit of report, and then we can just uh, with Pastor Paul and actually in Juliet we are talking a little bit. Some point, you know, we are we are doing these trips to Sibiu, and that was a good time for me just to talk to them and to uh, encourage each other in faith. We uh, we had like um, we we supposed to have the conference last year in uh, in March, so we were ready to go, but then the border closed, so we had to go home. We were in lockdown for one and a, one and a half months almost. So we started to pray with the church in Brasov via Zoom. And uh, God put it in our heart, like he was steering us up about, you know, guys, you need, to, you need to go out, you know. And we were praying and praying and praying. And then I told uh, one of my friends, Pastor Virgil from uh, Brasov, I said, look, we have to do something. And uh, we decided to go to this city, Sibiu, which is like halfway from Brasov to Cluj. And uh, we are going there every two weeks, and that was amazing, amazing time. Uh, I got COVID once <laughs> when, I got, when I was there. One of the, my team members, you know, he was with us in the car for two and a half hours. So, of course, I breathe all that air. So, uh, I got sick. But I tell you, uh, I'm not sorry, because over 200 people got saved in that city, you know. And uh, we believe for a church there. We believe that God is going to do something great there. Then, you know, family has opened up, you know, people opening up, neighbors. And I know, of course, we heard many people died and uh, many people uh, are sick and uh, many people are still afraid, you know, to, to come out of the home. But for me, I don't know. For me, it has been a, a great year because... I could see God's faithfulness. You know, it's interesting. Now, it's, it's not natural for me to go out. To go out to evangelize. To go out to, to speak to people. I need to pray. Like, sometimes we do it naturally. Oh, we can do it. No problem. No one will stop us. But now I need to pray. And I need to, and I need to find the people who are willing to sit with you and talk. But people are so open and uh, I can see that and I think it's uh, really a great a great revival at least you know I know many churches closed but in the same time I believe that God is doing something in in the in the hearts of people so you know how do we look at the things around us we look by sight or we look by faith you know is God, is still God? Is still, is God affected by COVID? Or is he affected by any sickness or anything, you know, which comes in this world? Is God affected by us if we believe or we don't believe? No, he's not. So we, we can still, uh, you know, say, wow, praise God. Yeah, not yet, not yet, Pastor. Okay, just <laughs> we have a joke with Pastor Paul. <laughs> he will tell you after. <laughs> Yeah. So, <laughs> so I have a. I think I have a message, and uh, yeah. So uh, let's pray, and also maybe Chris, can you come? Just a little bit, Pastor Chris. You know, would love to. I would love to pray with you for Dana. If it's that okay. Yeah. Yeah, our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. Lord, that you, you have the power, Lord. You have the authority, Lord. There is no sickness, Lord. There is nothing which can stand against your word. And Lord, we know that she's not here, but uh, we, we know she loves you. We know that you love her, Lord. 
And uh, we pray, Father, that you will just say a word. Lord Jesus, just say a word and heal her, touch her, Lord. We pray that she will feel better. We pray that she will be encouraged, Lord, and she will be ministered to, Father. Thank you. Lord, we pray for many other uh, body members here in the church, Lord, that you'll bless them, encourage them, and protect them from evil one. Yes, Father, we pray that this church will continue to grow. Minister, Lord, to this precious family. Thank you for Pastor Chris and his life and his love for you, Lord, and his family. Bless this, Lord. Bless this message. Bless our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. The message is uh, about the potter's house. And um, God gave me this message uh, when I was in, uh, at the conference. You know, the, the theme of the conference this year was, uh, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. And uh, it was a great conference. It was very encouraging. I was so blessed to be there and to be part of it and to see the you know, Pastor Schaller and Pastor Shibeli, they they growing old, but, you know, to see their spirit, it's like, uh, you know, young, and they just really have such a great vision for this country and also for the, you know, for the world, worldwide. And uh, to see people coming from all over the country and the time, I mean, I'm telling you, there was full house all the time, all the meetings, and uh, of course the one o'clock meeting, many people were working, but the evening meetings were really, people were there, and there was such a hunger for the word, and I love that. And um, I was thinking about the, the house of the Lord, and um, I was thinking about the house of the Lord as the house of the potter. And we see that in, uh, in Jeremiah 18, and we read from verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he, he wrote a work, a work on the, the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was marrow married in, in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I do with you as, as this potter, says the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hands, so are you in mine hands, O house of Israel. And I don't know if you ever saw the a potter, I mean, I, I don't think we have that right, right now. Maybe in some places, people still doing that. But in Romania, we have people, and they make good money on that. You know, people coming and they buying. They do that the, the way, the old way, you know. They make by hands and they put it them in outside in a, in a, it's called oven, I think. Oven made from bricks. And or they put it under the sun, and they they put whatever they do it, but they and then they make it this all these ornaments with their hands. But to think about this potter, it says that he he used the clay, he mixed it with water, and it's a special clay, you know, they using for, and they put it on the wheel, and then as he was working, the the clay was not good, the vessel was not good. So he took it, he, he mixed it again, put it again on the wheel, and he made another, another vessel, how he liked it. And then God says, look, it's the same how you are in my hands. You know, like I, I am the potter and you are the clay. And I am, I am the one who, is, who made you, and I am the one who formed you. And we know, like when we look at uh, this, Humanity, like we look at people, we see that the first creation, right? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says that first man was of the earth, right? The second man was from heaven. The first man was made a living soul. The second, the last man, I mean the last Adam, he was the life-giving spirit. And I'm thinking about, you know, that God made man, and it was like, it was not like, 
God made it wrong. <laughs> it was not like God made a mistake. Oh, I made a mistake and now I will make it again. But the thing is that God gave man, gave us free volition and we fail. And then God says, I will make it again but I will make it in such a way that you will not be able to fail again. The second creation, I mean, the second Adam will be perfect. And in Hebrew chapter 10, in verse 5, he says, Wherefore, when he come into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you, you don't want, but the body you prepared for me. So you see, the first time God made the vessel, the vessel, you know, failed. But then when he made the perfect one, Jesus, when he came, he was perfect. There was no spot in him. There was no fault found in him. He was perfect. But you know what is interesting? It's interesting that actually when God break the vessel, when God break the vessel, was actually in Isaiah 53. When, when Jesus, and let's read that. You know, when Jesus actually was, was on the cross, he says in uh, Isaiah 53 verse 1, Who had believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He had no form nor com comeliness. And when he shall see him, there is no beauty that we should, should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid us where our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrow. Yes, we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. The Bible says actually that when, when the potter, let's say it this way, when the potter took the vessel, actually, and he destroyed it, it was the cross. That was the cross. When he took the vessel, he took the sin and he put it on Jesus and he break it and he put it on the well and he made a new one. And that's actually the cross because the Bible says that through the cross we have died with him and then we rose with him to be a new creation, to have a new heart and to have the mind of Christ. You see, like we bore the image of the first Adam but now we have the image of the last Adam. We have the image of Jesus Christ. And now I want to tell you, yes, the Bible says that it's finished. The work is finished. He finished the work. And in, in Romans chapter 8, you, you read in verse 29 and 30, it says that we have been called and then we have been, you know, elected by God. And then we have been, uh, let's read it because I don't remember in, in English. Yeah, 8, it says in verse 29, For whom he foreknew, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among his brethren. Moreover, whom he predestinated, he also called. Whom he called, he also justified. Whom he justified, this he also glorified. You know, God knew that man will fail. And he knew that his work on man would be able to be finished only through Jesus Christ. Only if we are put it into the royal family. Even only, only if we are put it in, in Jesus Christ. If we are hid with him in God. That's the only way we will be perfect. And will be accepted to be with God forever. Man failed. But God says, look, I have the power to do this. When the Trinity... You know, they, they gathered together and they foreknew 
the future. They foreknew the mankind. They knew exactly what will happen. They decided what they will do. They decided that Jesus will be a man. They decided that he will be stricken, that they will, he will be you know, crucified for us, for our sin. And then they decided that whoever will believe, they will be placed in Christ and they will be with him forever that we will be like him and right now I'm telling you we are on this well we are on this well but actually the work is finished I don't know how to explain that but we are still here why and you know what kind of work he's doing the Holy Spirit in us because through the Holy Spirit God puts in our hearts love and his love is forming us and his love is surrounding us and then he gives us peace in the situation yes we are in heavenly places right now but also we live here on earth and that's why we need the love of god we need that the love of god will be present with us in every situation in every moment of our life yes you know our flesh is here but god says look you don't have to worry about your flesh. You don't have to worry about your sin. Don't worry about the enemy because I'm doing the work. The enemy has no place on the wheel. He has no authority there. We think it's like Joseph telling his brothers in, in Genesis chapter 50. He says, look, what you meant for evil, God changed it for good. Because God has the power. God has the authority. We know that, that the enemy, the devil, is just a servant. He cannot do anything but what God allows him to do. And now, remember, we are on this will, but what's happening? Actually, we are formed into the image of Jesus Christ. What was the hardest part was made already. It's finished. Our sins were removed, and now, all of us, God is working through us. I mean, God is working with us, with our free will, that we will be formed more and more and more like Jesus Christ. And I love that. I love that it says in Amos chapter 3, verse 3, how can two walk together if they don't agree first? So I'm on the will, and God says, will you trust me? Will you trust me because... I have something to do, I have work to do, but Lord, will that be painful? He said, my son already suffered for you. He already took all the pain. He already took all the bruises. He already took all, everything what is what's supposed to do about that. He took it on himself. Right now, the work what I'm doing with you, it's beautiful. And I'm giving you, I'm giving you the provision for that. Anything what we go through, there is grace for us. It's like Paul is saying to God, God, I don't want this in my life. I don't want to be like this. And God says, look, my grace is sufficient for you. I have grace for you. I have mercy for you. I have peace for you. I have joy for you. And you can walk with me. And look, the suffering in this world, it's for just a little bit. And comparing with the eternal, eternal like glory, you cannot even compare it. And I know, I, you know, I, I, I'm telling you, my wife is good with pain, I'm not. You know, she has headache and she doesn't tell me anything, she's making breakfast, she's cooking and everything. And then I, I look at her and say, hey, she's like, you know, like a tear is coming. I said, what, you have pain? She said, yeah. I said, why you didn't tell me? She said, you cannot change anything. I can pray for you. You know, in, I have a little bit of pain. I just talk, take all the medicine, you know, all the painkillers I'm trying. But I'm telling you that God knows our pain. He knows where we suffer. He knows where we are in our situation. But he said, will you trust me? Because I suffer for you. And I want you to know that this is just a little while. This is just a short time. And everything what's happening here, I have control. I'm in control, I'm on the throne. It's not like God look aside and you know, and coronavirus came. Oh my God, I fall asleep and I forgot about that, to close that door or something, you know. God, 
God knew about this. And he has a provision for us. And know this, that, that actually, you know, as we walk here in this, today, in this world by faith, people will see that. And we are just walking with Pastor Bob and, you know, giving Bibles to people. And it's interesting to see how, how open people are. And they, they want to hear something. They need a good news. They need to hear, hey, is, any, is, is anyone really caring for me? Yesterday we went in uh, Indianapolis to visit Pastor Don Barnes, and we went a little bit out to, to, to visit some people and talk to people, and two people received Christ. And it was amazing. This lady was just, you know, she, she was filled with guilt. And they said, you know what? You can just give it to him. You can just give it to Jesus Christ. You can just, you know, tell him, Lord, I, I don't want, I cannot carry this, this burden. And he is faithful. He is good to us. And he loves us. And he wants us to be healed. And I know many times we take, you know, it might seem like it's never stopping. You know, I, something is over and something else coming and something else coming and something else coming. And we think, Lord, when? When? And I mean, we have all the right to ask questions. You know, we can ask questions because God has the answers and he is not offended at us. And he will speak to us kindly and he will love us and he will carry us and he will provide for us. So remember this, we're still on this will, and he is forming us. And he's saying, look, I know where you are. I know what you need, and I want to give it to you. And I already gave it to you through my son, Jesus Christ. And I believe, I believe, you know, that God has, for every one of us here, has something special. Because he loves us, and he cares for us. And, you know, I, there was this, um, I was sharing this uh, yesterday, actually. There was this lady, uh, I don't know where she had my phone number from. So she called me and uh, her mother was dying. And uh, the hospital was closed, you know, you couldn't really get in. And then she said, can you go and pray for my mom and anoint her with oil? And... Uh, I was thinking like, uh, okay, what's happening with her? They, she said she is, uh, I think she had a stroke, you know, and uh, they were measuring her brain waves and was like, you know, dead, you know. And the doctor said, like, we're just waiting for her, you know, the, the things will, I mean, the heart and everything will start failing and probably she'll die soon. And they said, no, we want to talk to her. We didn't see, some of us, some of her children didn't see already for one year. They were living far. So we want to talk to her at least. And the doctor said, hey, you cannot talk to her. She will not hear you. So she said to me, Pastor, can you pray? Can you do something? And I said, look, I cannot do anything. I just can pray. But God is the one who will uh, make something if it's his will. So they talked to the doctor. And they said to the doctor, hey, her pastor wants to go and pray for her. I didn't know the woman. I didn't saw her in my life, you know. So they, the doctor said, okay. So I went up. He asked me who I am. I just shared gospel with him br briefly. And then he took me to the lady. She was laying, you know, the machines were there and connected. She was connected there. And then I start to pray for her. And I anoint her with oil. And... You know, I just saw that just her finger made like this. You know, that's it. And then, you know, I went. And in that evening, she called me. This lady called me, her daughter, and said, look, my mom woke up. And they allowed us to go. And I don't think she could talk, but she could just, you know, smile to them and just, you know, just keep their hands. And, you know, they, they were around her, all the children. And they, they talked to her, and they, I think some of them, they had to ask forgiveness or whatever they did. But she was, you know, she went home to be with the Lord in uh, next day. 
and then they invited me to the funeral and uh, I preached at the funeral there were many people there and uh, it's interesting to see you know that that God you know like the doctor said you know it's she's dead she will not be able to but God did it for her children you know he listened to the prayer and you know I don't know why he didn't allow her to live more it's you know it's uh, it's it's God's choice but what I want to say that he has the power he has the authority and of course he could make it that she will live longer you know of course she can he could do it uh, I prayed for that you know but God chose to do it that's what he chose to do and I like it because he has the authority in our life but now as we walk with him and we are in his house God is asking us you know how he's asking us like he was asking the father was asking the son and the Holy Spirit and say can I do anything without telling my friend Abraham and Jesus said to us I'm calling you not servants but I'm calling you friends and he is asking us hey will you go for me will you go with me in this in this situation and I remember Richard Wurbrand he was for six years or eight years in the in the prison and then he went out for three months I think and uh, God was speaking to him that I want you to go back <laughs> and he told his wife said look I think God is asking me to go back and uh, and she said if God is asking you then go and he went and he went back in the prison and he was there for several years and then he was taken out of the prison and then he started this great ministry the voice of the martyrs you know there is a preparation we are on the wheel for a reason we are in God's hands for a reason because God is preparing us for this earthly ministry but also for heaven remember the crowns and all the the uh, how do you call this the rewards what we receive it's actually connected with our nature the nature of Christ formed in us every crown is speaking about one particular ca character of Christ formed in us like for example the crown of joy is the crown for the for the for the soul winner or someone who was waiting with joy for the coming of the Lord you know the the crown of glory is for pastors who are preaching the Word of God faithfully the unperishing uh, unperishing or uh, how do you say that not perishing imperishable crown it's for those who are standing against the temptations and they're not giving up to temptations but they're standing by faith in the Lord so you see this is this is the character of Christ formed in us so that's what is happening on the wheel this is what is happening you know our sins were like were paid for with Jesus Christ but now we are alive and the, the work God is doing in us through the Holy Spirit and the Word of God is the work that we will be formed more and more and will be more and more like Jesus Christ. And that's how we will be forever. And maybe, you know, it's not easy. But I'm telling you, it's worth it. It's worth it. Because, you know, we will be like Him. We will be changed in the moment. There will be a time like that when we will see, and you know, there will be a time. I think for every one of us, will be why I didn't make this <laughs> decision. But it will be just for a moment because then we will enter into eternity, and there will be no tears, you know, and there will be no sin, and there will be no enemy, and we will live with Him forever. And I think it's worth it it's worth it you know if it will not be worth it Jesus will not come if it will not be important he will not come to die for us he will not call us you know and everything what's happening here it's beautiful and just 
one more thing and I will finish with this. Uh, your country. I consider this my country, spiritual. My spiritual father lives here and this is my country. I want to pray for my country. I want to, you know, believe that God has still has something great for this country. And we pray for this country because this freedom, what you have, what we have in this country was paid for. Not only Jesus paid for it, you know, but also many believers died. Many people died for this. And I believe that people who laid the foundation of this country, they knew and they, they wanted this country to be a country used by God in the, into the many nations. And, you know, all the respect, all the respect for the work of God, you know, in this country and through this country, through many missionaries and many people just, you know, walking with God by faith. So, Father, we thank you so much for your faithfulness. We thank you that we are with you, Lord. Thank you that you are with us, Lord. Thank you that you never leave us, you never forsake us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we are on, in your hands, Lord, and you are forming us, Lord, and you are making us into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the work, that work is perfect. Thank you that you are not expecting anything from us, but you are doing such a great work in our hearts, Lord. Thank you for using us, Lord, here in this country and many other countries around the world. Thank you, Lord, that you have the authority, you have the power. Lord, there is no enemy who can stand against you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you'll continue to prosper this church, Lord, and you'll bless this church, and you'll continue to minister and bring people, Lord, fill this place, Lord, with people who are hungry and thirsty for your word, Father. Yes, Lord, we thank you, we love you, in Jesus' name, amen.